Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to start part one of a three-part series about transitioning to industry from academics. Today we're going to talk about a high-level overview about what it's like to work in industry and some of the advantages and disadvantages. In part two we're going to be talking about networking and how you could try to get yourself some interviews to move to industry. And then in part three we're going to talk about actually getting your foot in the door and what it's like to actually start the job in industry. So let's start with just a high level overview in case anyone's not as familiar. And then from there, we'll go into a brief overview of some differences from academics. And then we're gonna go into some advantages and disadvantages. So from a high level perspective, whether you go to a big company like Big Pharma, Pfizer, Merck, Novartis, or you go to a startup, the companies are gonna be structured fairly similarly. At the very top, you're gonna have your C-suite, which is gonna be your CEO, CFO, etc. Underneath there are going to be different VPs, so a VP in finance, VP in drug discovery, VP in biology. Underneath the VPs are going to be directors, and again these are going to be in specific groups, so a director of biology, a director of bioanalytical sciences. Um, underneath there are going to be your, your scientist track, which is going to consist of scientists, senior scientists, and principal scientists. And these are gonna, for the most part, be PhDs. And underneath those are gonna be your associate track. Associate scientists, senior associate scientists, and principal associate scientists. And these are gonna be a mixture of master's and bachelor degree um, individuals. Now, the main difference that I'm gonna be talking about is more for a scientist track and people that are coming from a postdoc, but some of this may also apply to someone that has a master's degree and did some lab work as a master's. Um, so let's just talk briefly about a couple of the differences that you're gonna notice moving from academics to industry. So I think one of the biggest things you're gonna uh, notice is the amount of time you spend at the bench. So when you're doing your postdoc, you're gonna spend nearly all of your time at the bench. When you move into industry, it's not gonna be quite that way. In fact, about a quarter of your time is most likely going to be taken up by meetings. These are going to be one-on-ones, um, business meetings, planning meetings, um, personnel meetings. There's going to be a lot more meetings, particularly if you're like me and you um, have managerial uh, roles in your job and you have to manage multiple people. You may not spend any time at the bench or close to no time at the bench, which is, of course, very different than when you are in academics and you're spending almost all of your time at the bench. Now that's not going to be a hundred percent true. There are some people that are going to come in at, at a scientist level and still spend the vast majority of their time at the bench. But in general, you're going to be spending less time at the bench. I think that's just sort of a given, especially with the amount of meetings that you have to do. Um, another difference that you're going to notice is the amount of hours you work. Now again, this is going to depend on the department that you're in and whether you're at a small cap startup or if you're going to be at you know big pharma the bigger the company in general the less hours you're going to work startups need a lot more work to get going off the ground and that's why you're going to end up working more hours there and if you could go to a more established company you may end up working closer to that 40 hour mark um, which is going to be vastly different than when you're working as a postdoc and you know the more times the centrifuge spins you know, the more data you get and so you end up working a lot more there um, I think that there's also going to be a lot less oversight when you're in industry. You're going to have one person that's, of course, your direct manager, but there's going to be a lot less checking in versus, I think, when you're a postdoc and you're going to have a PI that kind of wants to know what you're doing because they need to know for grants, etc. Here, when you're in industry, you're probably going to check in in your weekly meeting and that's about it. And you may not have quite as much oversight, so you're going to have a little bit more uh, leeway in that. But from there, I kind of want to move on to talking about what are the differences between working in academics and working in industry in terms of the pros and the cons. So if you want a more detailed video about what an actual day in the life is like of somebody that's a PhD working in industry, let me know in the comments below and I'm happy to make that video. Um, now this kind of um, pros and cons is going to be more directed towards not necessarily a postdoc, but um, a PI. So if you were a PI in academics versus, um, say, a director in industry, what are the pros and the cons of this? Um, 
So let's start with flexibility. This is definitely a pro for, for uh, academics. In industry, they're gonna tell you from way much higher up what you're gonna be researching. And even if you yourself make it to one of those higher levels, you don't necessarily get to always make those decisions. There's a board of directors, there's other C-suite people in the company. Um, in academics, you get to run the show and do it the way you wanna do it. And in industry, it doesn't work that way. Um, there's always somebody that's gonna have input besides you. So you need to be a little more malleable in an industry position. Whereas in academics, you can kind of run things the way you want to run it. Now, what you gain in flexibility in academics, you lose in pay. So if you're a professor, and especially if you make it up to a chair, you can make good money in academics. I don't think that many of the PIs are really hurting for money. Um, but in industry, the pay is much more. Your base salary is going to be much higher. The bonuses that you get every year add on to the, the money you take in. You'll get stock options every year. You'll get a new hire option grant. You'll get even sometimes a new hire sign-on bonus as well. So the amount of money that you can make in industry is a lot more. Not only that, your 401k options tend to be a lot better and you get an employer match, so you're better set up for retirement. Um, so you got to remember that's a huge draw for industry and a lot of people really enjoy that. Um, but again, there are still advantages to academics. Ownership is one. So ownership and the ability to um, claim things as your own. And there are people that are egomaniacs and they need to control everything and be in charge of everything. And so of course, ownership is going to matter. But even for people that aren't like that, a lot of scientists like being able to take ownership of their work. They like being able to say, um, I did this specific experiment or this specific project and these were the outcomes and this is how I've moved my field forward. That is one of the most rewarding parts of science is being able to say, this is what I've done to directly impact my field. And now others can build off the work that I did. Um, that's awesome and one of the best feelings. Um, in industry, you don't really get that kind of ownership. Uh, everything that you do is gonna be touched by at least a dozen other people. Um, so your ownership is a small slice of a much larger pie in industry. Um, with that being said, there is the advantage in industry of translatability. Now I know that people that are diehard in academics can harp on this one, but this is going to be some cold, hard truth. The translatability in, in uh, academics is next to none. In academics, we always start off our papers or end papers, grants, presentations, seminars, where we talk about this is the disease that I'm targeting. I am targeting this disease. And then we go off about mechanism and how what we're doing can directly impact a disease individual. And don't get me wrong, there are people that have gone from academics and started their own companies and have produced drugs based off of what they did in their academic life. There are labs that have come up with really cool ideas and inventions and technologies that a company has said, that's awesome, let's buy that from you. You know, let me buy that intellectual property IP from you. That is less than 10% of the cases. The overwhelming majority of the time, the PIs are so swamped with trying to get the next paper or chasing the next grant that most of what they do isn't all translatable. And that's fine. Mechanism and, and moving fields forward is really important. And, and industry takes these forward leaps and uses that in their own stuff. But most of what you see is never going to make it to the bedside. In industry, though, you are literally making a drug and having your hands in drugs that are going to be given to patients. So if you want that translatability aspect being able to say what I did directly impacted a patient. Industry is definitely the way to go. Um, and one last pro of industry is the grants. You don't have to chase grants or high impact papers. Um, it's really good if you publish in industry, but it's not always necessary. 
your company is going to fund your research. You don't need to get the next R01 to keep your lab going or worry about how you're going to find funding to do, you know, this experiment that you need for your grant. Um, you get out of that vicious cycle. Um, that's something to also consider is do you want that kind of pressure for the rest of your life? Um, but at the same time, there's other pressures that go into industry. So volatility is something in academics, especially if you're tenured, once you have your position, you're pretty set. Like you don't have to worry about your job disappearing. In industry, it's not that way. Your job can disappear any day without any warning. Um, if you're in certain types of work like bioanalytical sciences or DMPK, those are areas that kind of the whole company relies on and so your job may be a little bit more stable but for most of the positions out there a company could come to you and say we're cutting your division you know i'm sorry you're gone and they just lay off the whole division and this is from small to large companies um, you're not necessarily protected and so there's very few people i know in industry that weren't laid off at one point so if you're not okay with having to jump ship and move to another company you know, maybe academics is more for you. Um, but with that, I'm going to start wrapping this video up. I don't want it to go too long, especially because we have two more parts to this video. But if there's anything in particular in this video that you want me to elaborate on more, let me know in the comments. I can always make follow-up videos that go more in depth about the differences between academics and industry. So if you like the video, please like it, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you.